Thanks for tuning into this episode of the Human Performance Outliers podcast with Zach Bitter. Yeah, and I think uh, the logical thought here is that, well, what we need to do is we need to encourage younger and middle-aged folks to start getting some strength training into their programming or into their lifestyle so that when they do reach these ages, it's not a scenario where now we have an older, relatively weaker person trying to first start to learn strength movements, which also comes with a risk factor as well. If you're trying to do that at the first time and you're as an elderly person. Um, But obviously you can't go backwards and do that with someone who's already in that position. So is there like a standard protocol that maybe you would prefer or that we're seeing become preferred for say someone in their 65 plus year range who is battling sarcopenia in terms of like, what's the proper like programming from a strength standpoint? Right. Well, you know, I think number one, what we need to think about is prevention and really truly educating and thinking less about performance indexes and, you know, sport performance and really thinking about longevity, which is the majority of the population. And right now, the, you know, when the conversation is about longevity, it's about a lot of other things other than skeletal muscle and other than optimizing for protein. In fact, If you listen to the current narrative, they will tell you the opposite. Mm -hmm. So educating and having foresight to realize that, knock on wood, if we are lucky enough, we all get older. Um, It's a privilege to grow grow old. And really thinking about that trajectory early on is essential. The second part to that is it depends on, obviously, the training status. Sue Phillips at McMaster's University talks a lot, and a lot of his research is based in you know, obviously performance, but also in the aging and elderly. And he would talk about volume, that it doesn't have to be necessarily heavy, but there's a certain amount of exertion that has to happen. And he's got protocols in his studies. But again, I think it's very interesting, more so than diet, being very specific. I think training is is very specific to the individual because we have no idea their training age, no idea their injury. Um, But of course, weightlifting and less cardio, even though cardio is important for mitochondria, weightlifting and resistance exercise is a cornerstone for prevention and counteracting the progression of sarcopenia. Thanks for tuning into this episode of the Human Performance Outliers podcast with Zach Bitter.